So we left you at the end of part three with Nick uttering those immortal words, I have a plan. Some of you have already asked the same question we were asking ourselves, which is, why bother putting that scabby old drum brake axle back on the truck? Well, we couldn't think of a good reason either, especially when the DAF comes with a perfectly good axle with full air brakes and massive ventilated discs and calipers. It's hard to get a handle on the size of these brakes, so here's some merch for scale. We bought the donor truck for the engine and box, so this in essence is a free upgrade. But why stop with the front axle? It's also got a disc brake rear axle with ABS, a jake brake and much more modern design of springs and a locking diff. And it works. So this is now turning into a full drivetrain swap. I haven't finished yet. Cruise control, traction control, onboard computer, 24 volt electrics, and electric windows. Is that it? Probably not, but I've run out of fingers. So we've had a high powered business meeting and guess who got volunteered to strip the entire truck? Woo! We've spared you some of it, namely whipping off the cab with the telehandler and Phil's expert driving, and also removing the wiring loom which was carefully labelled up and then dumped in a corner somewhere. The first job here is to jack up the front of the chassis and get it up on stands. Everyone should have an axle stand assistant. With the chassis now supported, it probably won't be long until the wheels come off this project. We're going to start the disassembly with the front axle. The whole assembly is fixed to the chassis with just six bolts. Four that go through the spring shackles and two that hold the anti-roll bar on. There's two nuts that locate the top of the dampers and that's about it. Yeah, that's great, there's the bolt to... Yeah. If you find, like this one, the nut comes loose then binds up a bit, we find it helps to do the nut back up again and then wind it out with a bit of a run up. And as this is the last nut on the front axle, we thought you'd like a bit of impact gun POV. Stop! What? Four rather crusty spring shackle bolts on the floor mean it's now time to remove the axle. How exciting! <laughs> 
That wasn't too painful to be honest, but now it's out, I wonder how much it weighs. The original cargo axle came in at 250 kilos, so this one is a bit more, but it's a significantly better piece of kit. We will have to remove the spring hanger from beneath the chassis rail, along with the reinforcement plate that joins them, and the rear hanger, along with this cross member, and the shock towers, and mount them all on the cargo before we can bolt up the axle. What remains of the DAF is just a bit in the way now, so let's get it all stripped down. Thankfully, everything on the DAF was bolted on, so it was easy enough to get off with the use of impact drivers, spanners, and the odd massive breaker bar. On the cargo, however, the spring hangers and all the important fixing points are riveted on, which means grinders, drills, and punches. Oh, and hammers. Lots of hammers. After thwacking off the spring hangers, the final piece to come off the front end is the steering box. I'll push it back up. Yep. And get your lever bar on the butt, right? Okay, she's off, yep. And she just pull her back off. Oh, yes! With the front end cleared, it's time to whip off the rear spring hangers. 
To do that though, I need to make a mess inside. Rip up that raised section of floor that we want to drop down to the lower level anyway, in order to gain better access to the riveted on cast steel spring brackets. Many of you are wondering why we're going to such a load of effort on this 34 year old truck, and why we didn't just build it onto that perfectly good DAF we just pulled apart. Well, there are myriad reasons. Primarily though, it's extremely difficult to find a 30 foot long extended wheelbase 7.5 tonner. They are quite a rare beast by all accounts. Not only that, but our cargo is a class 4, which means it can be driven on our existing licenses. Any other commercial vehicle would entail a plethora of bureaucratic and expensive hoops to jump through in order to take it on the road, and quite frankly, ain't nobody got time for that. I needed to break out the angry end to help grind out the rivets in this reinforcing plate, but it came off after a little light persuasion. After fighting with the rest of the rivets for a while, the last of the spring hangers eventually came round to my way of thinking. This is the near side front spring hanger box from the DAF but we're going to be using it on the off side. The front of the cargo chassis is 40mm wider than the DAF's and you can see that the hanger box is about 20mm wider than the DAF chassis rail. Handily for us, that's the right offset but in the wrong direction, which is why we'll be flipping them round. We've got rid of the cab tilt ram bracket because, you know, fixed cab and stuff. These big brackets are handed, but they're exactly mirrored for left and right hand drive applications. So what we've got to do here is re-drill these two holes at the top onto the opposite side of the bracket so we can mount the steering box. There were a couple of small holes right in the way of where we wanted to put one of the new ones, so they got welded up and ground back before marking up the centres. As is customary, the step drill is pressed into action for this type of job. So now we have a pair of matching holes on the other side. Excellent. We kept one of the DAF chassis rails and marked up all the mounting points for various pertinent parts. We're using the middle of the front bump stop, i.e. the axle centre line, as our datum. And here I am marking up the cargo chassis with its axle centre line so we can use that to measure forward to all the mounting holes we need to drill. Any error here could be disastrous. So we're on 748. 748. I'll put it on 848. Alright. So you're on 100. Oh, brilliant. Can't see a damn thing. No one. <laughs> literally, literally can't see anything. Where's the, where's the torch? Bodge. Bodge. Brilliant! Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, shit, there's no battery. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Some time later. So eight, eight four eight, you eight four eight. Okay, so we're hungry. The bottom of the cargo chassis rail swan necks upwards right where we're yeah. marking out. So we have to Oops. use the flat top section to measure, then transfer it down to the bottom to mark out the holes. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
after drilling the 4mm pilot, I'll whack the step drill through to 12mm and then this 13mm twist drill finishes the job. These three holes at the end of the chassis rails are to bolt the cargo's front cross member to. They will need to be drilled into the spring hanger box, so I'm marking the location out with a blunt scriber. Holes now drilled, the box is then bolted back onto the truck. Here's the huge bracket that holds the steering box. Two of the holes needed Nick's already drilled in the spring hanger box, and three of the remaining four correspond directly to this reinforcing plate from the other side. So we'll transfer those and get them drilled through. It's the same process as before, whack through to 12 with the step drill, then finish to 13 with the twist. The one hole that didn't line up with the reinforcement plate, we just measured and marked out conventionally. Get underneath here. Get this one. 
Because mm -hmm. what I should have done is took the nut off the stud and put the stud in the steering box and just put the washer on it. That would have been brilliant, wouldn't it? This is probably... <laughs> Bugger! We'll never, never see that again. <laughs> I need a rule. Should we do that again and actually do that? Shall I go and get this knot off the stud? Oh, it's over there. That's the other one, you idiot. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the one that's on the screen? Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah, well done, Richard. Oh, I can see it now. Can I? Ah, a little bit. Good work. <laughs> Right then, that's right. See if I can, if I can put. Look at this. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> Let me extricate myself. Right. Massive spanner. See, that fits much better. You want that? Okay. The one you've just put away. That. You may have noticed we whipped up a couple of spacer plates to fill in the gap between the bracket and the chassis rail. The offset is now on the inside on the cargo, whereas it was on the outside on the DAF. Now the remaining question is, can we fit the steering box in the confines of the area between the cab and the mahusive bracket? Yes, yes you can. Woohoo! Rinse and repeat. Same old, same old passenger side. Uh, the only difference being it don't have a steering box on this one, it's got a reinforcing plate instead. Time to throw on the cargo's front cross member. Well that went well, what about the DAF's lower brace? Also pretty much spot on. You can see that the lower beam mounting holes are actually slots. Dead in line this side. What? Dead in line this side. So with all that bolting up beautifully, we're happy that the front spring hangers are in the right position. So with that done, it's time to move on to the rear. Front spring hangers. You'll see what I mean. Yes, this is the rear spring hanger for the front springs. Not the rear springs. We're yet to get to those. And this one has the added complication of bolting through this curved upper cross member. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Use the bit before the shadows. Or after it. That's fine. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've got enough. No, I need 9 through 2, so you have to go on the end, sorry. You happy? What the f are you doing with the red pen? Well. <laughs> It's not the right thing to do with vernier calipers. Oops, you know. <laughs> this, this is about as straight as you are. Are you going to be long? Sure. Oh gosh. Yeah, let's pick any one of those lines. I'll be alright. Right, okay. Somewhere around there. 
You don't get much of a an indent. Here. If you used a proper size army in mind. This is perfectly adequate. I'm clearly compensating with something. The plan here is exactly the same as the fronts. Bolt the spring hanger up using the lower holes I've just drilled. Then transfer the upper hole centers onto the chassis. And then measure up to the last pair of holes for the cross member. Lastly, drill through to 13 mil. Oh, and then copy the whole thing onto the side before sliding the cross member in to be fully bolted up. Right. Needs a tight squeeze in. Suppose. That looks alright, doesn't it? You want to go up from the bottom or down from the top? Please. Funny on your knees. Good. I can't get to it. Good. Two needs to go through this first. Oh, yeah. But. Uh, maybe. Okay, that's good. The bottom ones. I should have to come in a little bit. All that needs to go. Actually, if we buzz those up, mm -hmm. that'll pull it all square, won't it? Well, that pull those together because there's a gap behind it. Are you ready? Four bolts for the sake. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're doing a really good job of it, though. Ah, sorry. So you have to gun this side up first. Mm -hmm. Can I get this through this? Yes. Okay.
Herbs, please. Got it. Oh, just like a gazelle, you know. Yeah, an aging one. Hang on. That was the right size, isn't it? Helps you put a frickin' nut on a bomb. Did I forget that? <laughs> or did I just, it dropped off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. The hangers and the all-important cross member that reinforces and ties them together across the truck are properly in. Now we should pop the engine and gearbox back in the hole. Just like that. Of course all that was preamble for the job we actually want to do which is bolt the front axle up. The springs are located with bolts through these bushes and the hardware is surprisingly puny. It's hard for you to get a handle on the size of these bolts so here's another bolt for scale. Come and help. You have to, I have to hold this down. You have to put the uh, centering in. Yep. Pull this down from the other side. Okay. Put it down. Okay. Go with your bolt. Twatting. Give it a wiggle. Rotate. I'll get the backs in. I think it's gone on the skunk slightly. Okay. Apart from that one, apart from that one. <laughs> Wash them. So we get the back side. Oh, hit that. Oh, hell yeah. Good work, fella. To the back. To the back. I'm sure that works a treat. Now right, I can line these up. Oh, I 
on the other side. Give me a chance. We're in, mate. Coming off the jack then? Okay. Mind your legs. Yep, I'm clear. Awesome. Ooh. Go. Happy with that? Keep going. Hi, sir. Slightly scared. Do it. All right. We even found a suitable existing hole in the chassis for the anti-roll bar mounts. They just needed a tickle with a step drill before bolting them into place. Just to keep it out of the way really, the steering drag link is then loosely fixed in place. And finally, and most excitingly, the wheels go back on for the first time in months. Just like that. Just like that. Do you want to go off again? So I can square these up. Woohoo! The cargo has a new axle. Well, honestly, I don't think that could have gone any better. So let's hope everything goes just as well with the next phase of the plan. So join us next time for another exciting instalment of putting axles under trucks. I think that's all right. <laughs>